Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I have some Clinique makeup sitting on my vanity that I've been wanting to try. I'm just going to take a little bit of my Tatcha primer. It has been my favorite primer for the longest. At this point, It's 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 been months that I've been using this. I had a sample and then I finally got a full-size one. Honestly, trying to spend $52 on this is hard. But I think the reason that it's worth the money is because... You're getting a great skincare, um, like primers don't, most of them don't really come with things that are going to, um, be like beneficial for your overall skincare, your overall skin quality. And that's why I like Tatcha. Not that I'm making a, like a voice for them right now, but I probably, I, I really am. And I don't know, I have a little bit of texture on my chin and a little bit on my cheeks um, and my forehead. And I feel like, especially on camera, it comes up a lot. So I just felt like Tatcha would have been like the better option of primers to really smooth me out. I find whenever I wear this primer, my skin just looks like fucking money. The one that I have is the Clinique Even Better Makeup Broad Spectrum SPF 15 and it evens and corrects. So that's really interesting to me because i feel like not a lot of foundations care about that i want to shake it up just because a lot of times i forget to shake a foundation and you just you just never know so it says it's dermatologist developed it's allergy tested it's 100 percent fragrance free it visibly brightens restores and evens tone and, and you just need to shake well so that's what i did all right all right so we're just gonna start applying that off of first impressions on camera, it's looking very orange, and in person, it's looking still orange. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely orange. And the last time I tried a Clinique foundation, um, it was orange too. So, Clinique, anybody watching this, I would suggest connecting with some beauty influencers that are of melanin, and sort of getting their idea. Another impression on the smell. It's got a particular stench that I don't really care for, but it's not overpowering like maybe say a Huda foundation. This is also a very small package, but let's see, do we get, you get a fluid ounce. It's just in a different plastic uh, package. So the buffing brush, you don't need to do anything with it. It, it does the work for you. It's got short bristles on it. I feel like I'm getting a more a better coverage from um, the buffing brush than I am the sponge. The sponge, yeah, it definitely looks like a cast and compared to my neck. Oh yeah, this is definitely. And then I forgot to tell you guys the color. This is the color ginger off rip. I hate the color, and I definitely think that it helped even out like the dark spots as you guys see saw at the beginning of me recording this video. I had a lot of. Um, dark spots and hyperpigmentation like around my chin and especially my forehead and I do have some on my on my cheeks it definitely helped cover all that um and I feel like um any texture issues is because of Tatcha I can't really give it to this um Clinique but uh, I wasn't ma I, when I went into this foundation I wasn't really concerned about texture I was really concerned about if it was going to say what it says it's going to do which is to give you um, even in correctness so something like this probably could help for someone who has hyper pigmentation and, does, and doesn't want to like always color correcting because honestly color correcting is exhausting I, I, to be honest I don't really know what to expect right now because I don't really care for white eyeshadow but I have no way I'm like without words right now it's not like a Tommy Pickles from Rugrats. I have no idea why I just did that, but I, you know what it is? There's just so many darks in here, and I feel like it's gonna get smoky real quick. All over the lid, the lower lid. Is that the lower lid? Yes, yeah, sorry. All over the lid. I don't even know if you guys can see that. I look kind of like a clown right now, right? You know when clowns start doing their makeup dark shade from strawberry fudge duo this is this is why I feel like a lot of people don't buy 
Clinique because you can't even get like fun names out of them. Let's see, and I'm taking this a little bit higher. Um, it is a shimmer, so I'm probably need to tone it down. And I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush, which okay. And we're gonna go, even though this is like the cardinal rule, you wouldn't bring like a dark shadow this high up, but is this getting crazy? It is getting crazy. I probably should have did a cut crease from where I'm going with this. There is, you know what it is? I think they're all, they're all shimmers. Oh my God, they swatched terrible. This video is not what I was expecting. I apologize if you're annoyed with me right now, but if you were expecting to get like a quality video out of this, cause this isn't quality at all. It's looking very cat eye right now, which I don't mind, but I feel like. Let's put, let's keep putting it. All right, so because we're doing eyes, I'm gonna just finish doing um, eyes by putting a little bit of mascara on. Um, I've used this mascara before. This is the High Impact Lash Elevating Mascara from Clinique. So far I like it. I feel like it's properly coating every lash. Um, and I didn't have like a lot of X. Uh, right. Wow, this is very hydrating. Um, it's not really sticky like, um, other glosses. Like, it doesn't have that, like, my lips feel like it's got that glossy effect, but it's, it's more of like a juicy feeling. I actually kind of like this, like, if you want to put this on top of, like, a lip liner of your choice. Um, you could probably do that. I'm going to, um, let's give my final thoughts on everything. Let's talk about the foundation. The foundation, it's, it's weird because I felt like if I didn't, so I went in on this side to do my foundation with a sponge. And then the other side I did a brush. I'm used to both. Um, whenever i know i'm going to like an event i'm usually going to go in with like a brush and then a beauty blender to sort of smooth out areas where i feel like i have too much so that's end up that end up ha that is what end up happening in today's episode and i feel like um i may have put a little bit too much but the thing is is once i did tone it down with um the beauty blender i feel like the areas where i was the most concerned lost a lot of coverage and so maybe if you're someone who either owns this or tried this, you could probably just work in sections and give yourself like a, a full, um, I guess a full, you can give yourself like, I guess you can fully cover your face. I don't want to say full coverage, but you can fully cover your face. Whereas you would probably just go in with a beauty blender or just use the remaining product that is on this brush to build up these air. Cause this area is showing up on camera and in person, especially my chin. And I noticed my forehead. And before I went in with the beauty blender to thin it out, it felt really heavy on my my, my skin. And usually, um, I hate that feeling. Like, I absolutely hate the feeling of heavy foundation. So, my biggest concern is that I feel like for the evening and correcting, if I, because I went in with the sponge, it thinned out and I can see, I see the discoloration coming through. So, this needs to be reworked in some kind of way. I think the idea is nice. Um... I like the way that it feels on my skin now and I like the way that it looks on my skin but I don't care for um, the color 
um there wasn't really many options for somebody like me so that's kind of disappointing pointing but i do love that this is reasonably priced and that this is a one fluid ounce so this is what one fluid ounce looks like the entire bottle feels like it's full the package is easy it's a squeezable tube um it doesn't get messy so that's nice that's something nice to work with and i actually kind of do like that it's spf 15 so in case you do forget at the first two hours of exiting your house your skin is protected um at SPF 15 which is you could you should always do a little bit more than that but it's nice that you have that initial barrier to protect you from from the sun so do I think this is worth purchasing um I'd say get a sample at Sephora and try it for yourself next thing let's get into this eyeshadow this eyeshadow looks terrible on me I'll be honest with you and I don't think that this is worth spending your money on this are missing the mark on what brands are doing with uh, obviously you the reality is is that the makeup industry the beauty industry is a competition it's a multi-billion dollar competition and everybody has to step up to the plate to have inclusivity but also have products that are essential to one the everyday woman but also sort of the instagram woman too someone who likes a full coverage someone likes a full entire beat and wants that but also you've got to find a middle ground and i feel like this palette is not for the everyday woman and it's not in the middle ground and it's definitely not for the everyday instagram woman either the reason i say that is that um, there are a lot of shimmers in here and while they are really pretty and they do um, blend I feel like there wasn't any actual playable like colors in there there weren't any colors that were like going to actually work with the everyday woman this sponge applicator tip I'm pretty sure you could it probably is not that expensive to make these and to sell these and it's probably there you like their staple of Clinique but to be honest who's act, no one's using that even if you are the everyday woman with three brushes and this is all you want to work with you have a fluffy brush so that you can put a crease color in there or put in any color and sort of swoop it out something like this is just not going to work period it's just not going to work it's not effective and it, it feels very juvenile i don't personally care for the fact that they chose these colors i feel like a lot of them are too dark and a lot of women the everyday woman is scared of dark colors like this i am an everyday woman but i do like an instagram beat as well and i try to find a happy medium and i felt like there were no colors that i could actually feel comfortable with which is why i went in with the white and i started with this one as well there aren't any fun colors in here the pink is probably doable but it's so chalky and it swatches weird and but it looks really like frosted on my finger that i feel like who the fuck is gonna wear this you know what I mean? Like, I'm really shocked that this is even in stores. We'll say some kind of things about the Clinique mascara. I do like it. I find that whenever I wear it, it dries down. It's nice. It does work much better with um, something like um, an eyelash curler so that you can really pinch your eyes because it really gave me that that high impact lash elevating mascara i like that and i know that this is sort of like a clean beauty so this is something that i will continue to play with i have used it before and i will continue to enjoy it i have honestly no complaints about it and i do really like this lip gloss i like the way that this is giving me sort of that um like I just finished eating a popsicle and I just put a little bit of like Vaseline on it. It has, it doesn't have the same texture, but sort of I put some sort of creamy um, thing, something of a creamy um, texture on my lips. I feel like it's very hydrating. I didn't need a, a lot and I think this would look really good with um, a lip liner. I know that the Mary Mako, Mary Mako had a line with Clinique for a while where they just sort of designed tops for them and they were just eyeshadows that they had already used, already owned or, or had. And so this was like a cute little design and they were way more fun and nude. And usable colors and i saw really good um reviews in these on the website so mascara and lip gloss are definitely a win for me the foundation is sort of a hit or miss uh, and this eyeshadow is fucking terrible so clinique work on this i hate that i have my fingerprints on it it's, it looks really disgusting i think packaging names of eyeshadows and just formula at that are very important to the consumer like myself so Clinique, I'm sorry this is not going to be um, something that will continue to purchase, but I'm so glad to do this for my channel. So if you guys are interested in me doing any particular videos, please sign off in the comments and let me know. And if there's anything else you want me to try, then let me know that too. Thank you guys so much for watching my channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!